Hey there, this is Red. It's time for another episode of Red Plays. All right, so what we're looking at is episode two of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. So in episode one, we went through scenario one, which in Jaws of the Lion, it's looking pretty much like the first maybe five or so adventures are kind of getting you used to the game. So in scenario one, we learned the basics of the game. So the story behind scenario one was that we are two people in the Jaws of the Lion, a mercenary group that works out of Gloomhaven. We were hired by uh, the wife of a blacksmith because the blacksmith has gone missing and we went out looking for the blacksmith. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find any sign of him. So we're kind of returning to town empty handed and with some bad news because we, we didn't find anything. Uh, on our way back to town, what we did run into was there were some vermlings that set up a barricade and were looking to ambush us. Now, rather than talking our way out of it, we are a mercenary band, so we dispatched of the vermlings. Uh, and there was some clues that led us to believe that the vermlings are up to no good because they usually don't operate in this manner. So we're going to kind of try to track down where the vermlings came from and see what's going on. So mechanics-wise, what's going on is... Uh, there's going to be some enhancements to the game at this point in time as we go from scenario one to scenario two. So uh, let's see here. One of the things that we got to do at the end of scenario one, let's see here. We got to put a sticker on our board, which is here. So we completed one, which is the roadside ambush. And now we're off to two, which is a hole in the wall. All right, so we did that part. We got character sheets. So I got to pull out the character sheets and name my characters. So my human Void Warden is going to be level one, and her name is Dora. And then my Red Guard, level one, and his name is Boots. So I've got Dora and Boots, and we've got a map. And I have kids, fairly obvious. So <laughs> there we go. That's my adventuring party. Um, card upgrades. So there were, there's two new cards, which the cards I was playing with before are, were all A cards. They had an A right there. Um, there are two new B cards. So the B cards are an upgrade of some A cards. So let me see here. Where's, so like that one's Wicked Scratch, and that's an upgrade to this Wicked Scratch, right? So my A goes over to B. So I'm doing pretty much the same thing at top, but at the bottom there, I now have a loot action, which means I'm going to get money instead of moving. So I'm not sure that I actually like that more. Well, that's my only loot action, I think. So, uh, so we get a little bit of new stuff. All right. Um, oops, I think I put my other... I put my other A in here. Yes, I put my other A in there. So, okay, so I should still have six cards. I've got four A cards and two B cards at this point in time. All right, so then scenario two is going to add a whole lot of pieces to the game. We're going to get money tokens, which is why there's a loot ability, because that allows you to pick up the money. Uh, there's a treasure tile where you can pick that up. There's trap tiles where if you step on them, you take three damage. There's a door which will be, be between two areas, and if you open the door, it allows you to then to see into the next area. So monsters in the second area don't actually activate until you open that door. All right, we'll get to use basic actions, which I was looking for last game. So basic action are these two things on the card here. So rather than doing the top ability, I could just do an attack for two, or instead of doing the bottom ability, I could do a move for two. Where that comes in really handy are cards like this one right here. So now there's cards that when I use this ability, it ends up going in into my lost pile. So like when I rest, I lose a card that I can't use anymore. This will immediately go there when I use this ability. So if I were want to want to play this card, I could just play it for the two move and not play it for this bottom ability and therefore not lose the card. So um, it's got some some neat there there were times last adventure where I really wanted to use what was here rather than what was on the cards so but we can do that at this point now so that's pretty cool 
Um, so we talked about lost actions. Looting is being able to pick up stuff. So when I have loot one, like is on here, normally when I land, I end on a, on a hex, I can pick up what's in that hex. But loot one allows me to pick up everything in the surrounding hex. If it was loot two, it would be two hexes out. So it allows you to pull all the cash in. Uh, area effects, I don't think I have any area effect stuff. Uh, push and pull, I believe the red guard might have one that can push and pull monsters back and forth. Uh, there's a disarm ability, which means a monster can't attack. So a big thing is negating damage through lost cards. So one of the things you can do now is you can lose a card from your hand or two cards from your discard pile to stop the damage from one thing. So if that monster were to jump on me, he were to be like attacking for three and get a double and be hitting for six, rather than taking that six damage, I can burn a card in order to totally negate that. So that's something you should use very sparingly, but it's a good kind of like last ditch effort that you can pull out or your special trick you can pull out in extreme emergencies to stop big things from happening. Now, so our monsters. So last time when we played, the Vermlings only had one thing that they did. This scenario, they'll do multiple things. Um, one of the things it looks like they'll do is they'll do some ranged attacks. So, uh, that could be interesting. See how that works out. All right. So let's see here. We'll get that out of the way. We did number one. We're up to number two now, which is a hole in the wall. So there's an introduction here, which I think I will paraphrase. I'm not going to read the whole thing. So it says, uh, we see some vermling tracks that are not known for being sneaky. Uh, it looks like a body was being dragged. And we're following the tracks until we approach the walls of Gloomhaven. Uh, we notice that something's not right. Uh, there's a shadow on the lower section of the wall, and it's a hole. It looks like the vermlings have made a nest for themselves, burrowing into the wall itself. So we're going to crouch down low and try to sneak up on them and see what's going on. And then we hear a shrill shrieking, and the vermlings jump out with weapons. So obviously we have been spotted. So it looks like it's uh, time for us to kill some vermlings. All right. So we've got our map here. And we've got a starting spot right here. So I think I'm going to start right there. And we're going to put our red guard over here. And then let's see here. So I've got some 3D terrain I think I'm going to pull out from my, my gloom havening times. So let's see here. We've got traps that need to go out there. So let's set down some traps. There's a trap. There's a trap. And a couple more traps. A trap and a trap. Need some coins. Put some coins out there. So there's coins on the table. And when monsters die, they drop coins too. It's kind of like Mario or whatever. Um, let's see here. Is there just three coin spots? I think it's just three coin spots. All right, next up is there's some terrain out there. So I don't have big spiky barriers, so I'm just going to drop some barrels and stuff there. Oops, should go like that. Put a barrel over here. And then there's a treasure chest down here in the corner. Treasure chest. And last thing is a door. So we've got a door. Now, as far as vermlings, it looks like there's one, two, three, and they're all regular vermlings. That has a black one, that one has a black one, so those mean nothing go there. So I'm going to grab three vermlings. There, there, and there. All right, I think we're good to go. Let's see, how's our camera angle look there? We're kind of looking at the from the back of the heroes. Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so what do we have here? We have vermling one. One, four, and two. Okay, uh, so let's get our Gloomhaven helper set up here. So we're gonna set our scenario to two. Okay, we're gonna add some vermlings. We have one, two, and four. That's who we see right now. All right, um, and it looks like I see a little number four down here. So I'm guessing they have four cards that they could use instead of just the one that they had last time. 
Okay, so it's time to figure out how we're going to do an opening here. So, the red guard I know has an attack. I need to not shuffle those cards because I'm going to pick them. I don't need to shuffle them. So used to playing Marvel Champions and Magic and stuff. I want to shuffle my cards. All right, we're going to... Let's see here. I think I've got my attack that hits things. There we go. I'm looking at this attack right here, which all adjacent enemies take two. So I think I'm going to use that one. And I want to step up in between them in order to do that. So I'm going to need to move. I could use a base move. Or I could move three and try to move between them and get behind them a little bit. I think we'll do that. So no, actually a, ba a base move of two would get behind them also. But I also want to go, so we'll use this. Actually, we'll use this one. That's going to make sure I go first, probably, with initiative of 14. So we'll go with that. So that's going to give us initiative 14 for the red guard. All right, so as a Void Warden, we know that the red guard's probably going to go first. He's definitely going to go before us because his stuff is generically faster than us. Um, so he's going to go fight two Vermlings, so he's probably going to take damage. So I've got a heal. Maybe I should count on throwing the heal out. And if I go late, I have this. So that's potentially a double heal or, oh, a heal. Yeah, that's a I don't want to do a double heal. I could make him... Ooh, I could make him do an attack six. I would probably kill whatever is there. Um, the other interesting one is I could give him strength. So if he doesn't take him out this round, he will probably take them out. Or I could just attack one myself. Actually, I think I like the strength and the red guard up. So let's go with that. So then maybe next turn, it'll help him deal with whatever it is he needs to do. So we're going to go with... 68 is our Void Warden. All right, so we're going to draw. And what do we come up with? Ooh, all right. So first round, it looks like we're going to go first, and they're going pretty far towards the end. Uh, let's see here. The Red Guard is going to go. So we're going to do our... We're going to move two, and then we're going to attack two adjacent enemies, right? That's what we were thinking, so... We'll use this one. I could move three or I'll just move two. We'll use the move two. So one, two. We'll move right here. And then we're going to do the um, target all adjacent enemies with an attack of two. All right. So we'll start with this guy over here, which is number four. I'm going to flip our top modifier card. Oh, and we negated it. Ugh. Nothing on number four. All right, so number two, minus one. Oh no, not going as planned. <laughs> All right, so two is gonna take one damage. All right, things are not going well thus far. All right, so what's our boy Horton gonna do? Um. All right, so we thought she was going to go after the Burmlings and he would take some damage, but that's not how it's working out. Um, so do we want to try... So we could have our Red Guard go ahead and do the attack. So I could move and then attack. That might, or I can do my... I could heal for three, but he hasn't taken any damage yet, so that's kind of a waste. And I could strengthen him, but I don't know if that's going to help out that much at this point. I think I'm going to move and then attack. So I'm actually I'm going to move up here, land on this coin, which I will get. And then we'll do the one out. Actually, I could just do a basic attack. Yeah, so I'm just going to use my basic move and my basic attack which wasn't the plan at all, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do a basic attack against this guy right here, which is number two. All right, so we're going to hit him for minus one. Holy cow, we are 
not fighting well for a band of mercenaries we're, we're pretty poor <laughs> all right so let's see what our vermlings are going to do so we've done our red guard we've done our void warden we're up to the vermling so vermling's going to push one on adjacent enemies and attack for three at a range of two ouch all right, so we're going to look for Vermling number one first. And he's over here, and there's no move, so and there's nobody within two. So don't have to worry about that. All right, Vermling number two is the one that we've beat up on. Um, going to push one all adjacent enemies. So we're going to push the Void Warden here. We're going to push the Red Guard there. The Red Guard is going to take three damage. Oh, I think this is going badly. One, two, three. All right. And then he's going to attack for three at a range of two. Um, so I think it's the highest initiative is who he attacks. So that's the red guard. So we're going to get a vermling bonus. He's attacking for three. And oh, he's only going to do one. Okay, thank God. <laughs> Something has gone right. All right. All right. So then that was number two. So then we're going to go over to number four, and he's going to push one. So we'll push him here. And then he's going to attack for three at a range of two. All right. So he's attacking for three. He's going to flip a card. Oh, he's going to hit him for five. The red guard's down to one. Or do I use my, my discard a card thing in order to, ow, my gosh, that's pretty rough. So that's right off the bat. What do I have for healing? I've got a heal in there. I can heal for two. And I've got a heal in here. I think we're going to go ahead and we'll take the five damage. We'll go down to one. Ouch. Ow, ow, ow. All right. So there we go. We're going to get ready for our next round. Things went super badly. All right. So Red Guard needs to do the heal for two. That's his bottom action there. It's a heal for two. So we definitely need to do that. And then... Maybe we do a, I think we're going to do our Flaming Sickle. So our Flaming Sickle is going to attack for three and I can pull a bad guy into me. So I think we'll do that. All right, so that's the plan for the Red Guard. The Void Warden can heal at a range of three, so one, two, three. She need to get up into there in order to do that. Or one, two, one, two, three. Or be right there. So she would need to move three. And we can do that. So we can do a move three. Oh, nope. I need a top that does a move. Oh, so she's probably not going to be able to heal this turn. Um, we can do a... So we can do a disarm. So that's a make an enemy move and at a range of three. That might be a good thing to do. Actually, I could do that. So I can combine that with a this. So I could combine a disarm with this one, which makes the enemy attack the other enemy. So let's do that. We'll see how that goes. And that's, she's going to move at 49. All right. Things have not gone well. What was my red guard? Was at, we wanted to go earlier. We wanted to go at 41. Oh, what a horrible opening round. Okay. So let's draw and see what goes on. Oh, they're going first. Ah, oh, this is not. 
not good because what we're looking at is they're going to attack at a range of two. All right, so number one is going to go first. There's one. He's going to attack at a range of two for one. So we need a monster bonus card. So he hits for zero. Yes. All right, we have, that's four. This is two. We'll have two is going to attack the Void Warden. So he's attacking for one and is going to hit for minus one, so none. And then we have number four is in range of the Red Guard. So he's going to attack and hit for one. Oh, which is enough to take the Red Guard out. Damn it. I'm going to have to cancel that. So in order to cancel that, I need to burn a card from my hand or two from my discard. So what am I burning? I think I'm going to burn our Desert Knight. All right, so we're going to cancel the one damage in order to stay alive. God, that's pretty lame. All right. So that's the end of the enemy's turn. Not go well. So Red Guard, what's the Red Guard gonna do? So first of all, we're gonna play the bottom of that and we're gonna heal two. So heal two, one, two. All right, and we're gonna do the top of this one, which says attack three, range two, and then pull one. So we're gonna hit number one right here. Oop, and I forgot. I need to shuffle this up because when I get the, uh, I need to shuffle his deck up because when I get this card right here, that says I should shuffle at the end of the round. So let's shuffle stuff up here a little bit. Oop, put that in there. Actually, I would really prefer not to shuffle because uh, that hasn't gone very well. All right, so Red Guard's up to three hit points. We haven't even gotten past the door, killed a monster yet, and he's almost dead. This adventure is not going well. All right. All right, so we're attacking for three. We're going to get a boost. So what's our boost is going to be? Plus two, so we're going to hit for five. So the pull's not going to matter because we're going to hit number one there for five, and he's going to be gone. So one, two, three, four, five. Toast. All right, we're going to drop a coin there. All right, so that's the end of the Red Guard's turn. We're over to the Void Warden. So the Void Warden was going to, we're thinking, oh, that's not what I, that's the stuff I already did. These should be in the discard pile over here. Discard, there we go. All right, these are the cards I was looking at doing. So we have, um, Disarm range three. So I'm looking at this one first, I think. Disarm. I'm going to disarm somebody and then I'm going to move them two. So we will disarm this guy, which is number two. Yeah, we're going to disarm number two. Actually, one, two, three. So do I disarm four or do I disarm two? I think actually what I will do is, all right, because two's almost dead, so I could disarm two and have four attack him, or I could disarm four and have two attack him, and then they would both be close to dead. I think I will disarm two. So we'll use our disarm at range three on number two. So number two. Oh, we're going to, sorry, we're going to do it on number four. <laughs> Still trying to make up my mind there. We're going to do our disarm on number four. So number four is going to be disarmed, and that's the uh, little hand icon. So we're going to give him disarm. 
and we moved him two, so we moved him one right up there. All right, so then the next thing is we're gonna use this one on number two, which says force one enemy within range three to form an attack two on a monster that's next to them. So we're gonna use the monsters attack modifier deck for this action. All right, so number two is gonna attack number four and we're gonna use our monster attack modifier plus zero. So he's gonna hit him for two. So number four is gonna take two damage. All right, Void Warden is done. All right. So we're at the end of our rounds. Our problem is going to be that our red guard can't draw back up. So I have to discard at random one of my cards. Or I have to lose at random one of my cards to do a short rest. And that's going to go away and I'm going to get my hand back. I got four. All right. Now, now what do we got going on? So now we're gonna we're back to picking. So everybody's done. We're getting ready for the next round. All right. So I've got just two cards for my Void Warden. I think we're gonna try to go early. So Void Warden's got a twenty-three. We'll figure out how to play it when we get there. So Void Warden twenty-three. All right, next up for the red guard, he's got a lot of cards back. Um, so we could try to jump in and do the... Oh, this one will just take him right out. So that's do two damage to adjacent enemies. Uh, I could move two. Yeah, let's just use this one. Yep, I'm going to do 38. So he can move two and then drop them, which I think is what he's going to do. So, all right. So red guard is going to go 38. All right. So need to pause for just a second and I'll be right back. Okay. And we're back. So, um, we just got everybody ready to go and we're going to draw cards to see hopefully we go before these vermlings and yes all right so the void warden is up first so her last two cards involved she had a heal which we probably need to drop on the red guard um, and then we could attack for two but I don't think that it's really worth it so oh but we have to be at a range of three one two three he's not close enough so we can't heal him for two so what we can do is we can move up to one two and we could have him attack i don't know if that does us a whole lot so we could move to i mean it wouldn't hurt i guess all right so we're going to we're going to go ahead and use this just to move. Uh, we'll move three. One, two, three. So that's our move three there. And we get to use the top of this one. One ally within range three can do an attack two at range three. So. Um, one, two, three. So we can attack two on number two over there. So I'm going to allow the, the red guard to attack two on number two. So I'm only going to hit for one. Oh, hold on. I need to go back a second here. I want to go right here. Okay. So I do my move of three. I'm just going to go to right there because I'm going to allow the void war or the I want to allow my red guard to get in on both of them. All right, so then he's going to do is a, I've got a range of three to do my attack two. So he's going to do one damage to number two. Wow, that was kind of lame. One damage to number two. All right. Take number two down one. All right, then it's the red guard's turn. So what's the red guard going to do? Red guard's got his, what we're looking at is 
two enemies take two damage. And we're just going to use this as a move of two. So move two. And then two adjacent enemies suffer two damage, which will be enough to take both of those guys out. All right. Okay, so this one's going to take two down. And then this one's going to take two. All right, so we just took both of them out. Two adjacent enemies. All right. Coin, coin. We're done. All right. Hurts as the red guard is so low on cards. It's going to be tough to get through the second part of the thing. The Void Warden may need to pull it out. All right. So that is done. We're off to our next round. And what do we have here? We've got, I need to, for the Void Warden, in order to do my short rest, I need to drop a card. And our random card is going to be this one. Just some attacks and stuff. So we're okay with losing that. That's lost. All right, so do I worry about healing? What I really need to do is I need to move into that other room because we need to move pretty quick here. And of course, my move card is one of my heal cards also. Of course, my move card is <laughs> my big move card is my heal card. And my other heal card is in the move area. Doesn't that just figure? Um, so I could double heal. Do I double heal him? No, because I need to move. I need to get my butt in there. So one, two, three. And I could muddle at a range three. All right, so we're going to use this one as our move action. So that's 23. And then do I have something that potentially does a long range attack? So that's an ally can do an attack. Ally, ally, loot. So I think we're going to do this move, and then we're going to do this heal. I think it's going to be our plan. And we'll do it at 23. All right. So Void Warden is going to go at 23. Red Guard has his cards chosen for him because he's only got two cards. Um, I think he's going to go at 63. So the deal is everything's behind the door now, so we it doesn't get to go yet. It'll get a card when we go through the doorway, which is going to be really soon here because we're going to draw. And now we're going to go Void Warden. So Void Warden is first. We're going to do our move four. So she's going to go one, two, three, which is the doorway. So one, two, three, four. And you can move through friendly, so she's like right on up in there. All right, we're gonna get two. We're gonna put one and this one right here. Which one's this one? Four. So we get Bermling one and four. One and four. Okay. So that was our move four, which was the bottom of this card. Next up, we're going to do our uh, – oh, I did that wrong. I did the move four. I meant to do the move three. Damn it. Okay, so I screwed that up. Force one enemy within range three to perform attack, and that's not going to do any good. So, oh, I fouled up my card plays. I got excited. All right. So let's go over to the red guard. What are we going to do with the red guard? So he's got to move four. One, two, three, four. And then an attack of three. So he's got the possibility to take somebody out. If he doesn't, he's going to take a hit from attack two, which is, which is pretty rough. He also has a attack two of range two. So if he moves two, he's not going to be in range. I also could do a loot and just grab money, <laughs> be a jerk. I could take some cash here and just call it good. No, all right, we're gonna do our 
We're going to do the bottom of this one. We're going to do a move four, and then we'll do this attack three at a range two with a pull of one. All right, so we're going to go one, two, three, one, two. Is it a range three? What's the range? Range is two. Dang it. If it's range three, I could pull him towards that thing, but that's not going to do me any good. Oh, one, two, range of two. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think I'll do a move four, and then we'll just do a standard attack. So rather than using our special attack, we'll just use a standard attack on that one. All right. What I need is a plus two or our double. We'll see what we come up with. So this is number one. And let's get our camera over to where the action is. All right. Uh, so number one there, we're going to draw a card and plus zero. All right. So we do two. We do two to number one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I need to back up. Need to back up, sorry. Um, I need to move back four. One, two, three, four. We need to back that out because what needs to happen first before that is the Void Warden went, she revealed the Vermlings. The Vermlings need to do their thing. So they're gonna move one, try to attack two. Move one, he is going to attack two. So he's going to attack the Void Warden which is of the people to attack. She's the better one to attack. Gonna hit her for three, which is not the better down amount of damage to take, but that's all right. Okay, so because I'd exposed the Vermlings and they were 50, they go before the Red Guard goes. All right, that's actually gonna be better for the Red Guard, because when I go to do my thing, I can do a, I can move two, and I can use my attack to pull him into the spikes. So I'm going to use my move four and actually just move right here. And then I'm going to use my attack three of range two. And it's got a pull of one. So I can pull him one into the spike. So we're going to do an attack of three. So I get a boost card. My boost card was that minus one, I believe, right? I thought that's what I was getting. So I should attack for two. I'm going to pull him into the spikes and he's going to take three. So he's going to be out anyway. So this is number one. It's going to take tons of damage. So he's out. All right. Wormlings were done. Red guard is done. All right. This guy's gone. The spike trap is gone. And there's some dollars there. Okay, so we're over to the next turn. Now, problem is Red Guard's out of cards, so we're going to have to shuffle up and get rid of one. All right, we've only got three cards to choose from. Void Warden's got three cards to choose from, but two in the discard pile. All right, so... What I really need to do is get over in range there. So um, a move of three would be great, but I don't have a move of three. Um, I could try to go late and hopefully that makes them come into range. So that's a range of two. Um, that's an ally doesn't attack, that's an ally doesn't attack, that's an ally doesn't attack of range. That's a huge ally attack, but I would have to get him in range. So can the Void Warden, Void Warden's got to move four. One, two, three, four. So he's got to move four 
and then attack pull. So I think that's what the, so we'll say the board warden thinks he can attack and pull and he's going to go about the middle of the round is what he's saying. So void warden is saying I can go about the middle of the round, which is a, he's going to go with this one, 63. All right, and then our, or sorry, the red guard saying you can go about the middle of the round. So then our void warden is saying, um, I can make you do a bunch of damage. I can either strengthen him or can go late in the round. Go late in the round and do a big attack. So this is what we're going to do here, and we're going to go at 89. All right, so let's see what we get. We're cutting it down to the, it's getting pretty close here. All right, so the red guard's going first. I don't think this is going to work out like we want it to work out. Um, so he can move four. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. All right, so that's that one. That's his move four. So he gets to use the top of the other one, which is an attack three, range two, with a pull of one. So he's going to attack for three. He's going to get a boost of zero, so he's going to hit him for three. So one, two, three. And he gets to pull him for one. So he's going to pull him in for one. All right, so that's the end of the red guard. Now... Well, what the vermin's going to do is he's going to push one and then attack three. So he would push him probably not into any of the loot. And then he's going to attack three at a range of two. So he's going to attack. Oh, sorry. I need the monster deck. Monster deck. So he's going to hit for three, which is enough to take the red guard out. And the red guard is going to be gone. Because I can't, I could prevent that, but then I can't, I'm not going to have cards to draw. So he's out. Red guard's out. Red guard down. All right. So now we're to the void walker. What's the vo or void warden? I want to say void walker. That's not right. Void warden. So what do we have here? Our problem is... Um, we can move and then, so these are our cards that we have. We can do a, we can move for two and then we can hit him with the disarm. So our, our disarm has a range of three. So we could hit him from here. One, two, three. Yep. So we can move to hit him with a disarm and move him to. I think that's what we need to do. All right, so let's make this happen. We're going to use this to just move to. So one, sorry, one, two. We're going to move there. And then we're going to use this one to disarm and then force him to move to. So we're going to hit this guy with a disarm. Disarm is which icon? It's this icon, the little hand. Disarm. And we're going to make him move too. So we're going to actually put him right next to us. All right. Then we're going to be done. And we're going to go to the next round. So it's just me and this one Vermling. I can't get two cards, so I'm going to have to do a short rest and randomly get rid of one. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm looking for, he's got one hit point and he's disarmed. All right, so we're going to get rid of this card. We've got our four cards to choose from. So, um, <laughs> well, let's see here. See, I could make him step in the trap, but I just got rid of my, oh no, there it is. There's another disarm 
and I can force the target to move too, so I can make him move into the trap. That will be enough to kill him. So I think we've got the game here. Um, what would be handy would be before I do that, if I move on to the treasure chest, I think. And I need a move too, which is pretty standard, so we'll just grab this one. And we'll use 23 initiative. All right, so 23 initiative for the Void Warden. We're going to draw. Oop. And actually, sorry, he lost all of his hit points, so he's out. We're going to draw. All right, we go first. So we're going to use our... We're going to use our move three and muddle. So we're gonna actually, we're, actually we're just gonna use the move two. We'll just move two, land on this chest right here. So we get the chest. All right, and then we're gonna use our disarm, force the target to perform move two with me controlling the action. So we're gonna step on those trap where he takes three and that's gonna take him out. That was a close one. All right. Oh, holy cow. All right, so that mermling has gone. We get the treasure chest, and there's a place that says here, when the treasure tile is looted, look for entry 14 in the treasure index. So I have to find my book. Which book has the treasure index? Not that one. Is it this one? Does this one have the treasure index? Oh, there's a treasure index. So 14 says get three money tokens. Oh, so she had one, so she's going to get three more. So she's going to have four, four money tokens. All right. So we got through the end of that by Razor Edge. We just got that. I don't think there's much. It could have been just a little bit closer, but not much closer. All right, so let's see what our conclusion says. Our conclusion says, within the foul nest, oh, with the foul nest cleansed of those wretched creatures, you take your time searching every nook. Surely the city guard will want to know about this. It can't be safe to have vermlings tunneling through the walls. It's hard enough to fend off the raids as it is. Eventually, you do manage to find an unexpectedly large amount of gold under some rotten wooden boards. Sifting through the treasure, you also find a strange note. In crude scratching, it details some business arrangement between the vermlings and someone by the name of Roland. Ooh. Apparently, in exchange for supplying fresh corpses, ugh, Roland would pay the vermlings in gold. And judging by the amount here, the vermlings managed to kill quite a few people before you put an end to it. It's the best lead you have, so it's time to ferret out this Roland character. After resting at the Sleeping Lion, of course. <laughs> All right. So uh, we took out the Vermlings. We found the stash of gold. It says a reward of 25 gold each. And we get to open the item shop up and we get to add a sticker to the board. So um, I will figure all of that out in the next episode. We'll go through getting gold and it looks like we'll go through shopping. I'll drop the next sticker on the board and we'll get ready for scenario three. So um, there were a couple of bad plays in there where I played things wrong, which would have helped. I had a horrible card draw at the beginning there. I can't believe I stepped between those guys and drew what I drew. That was awful. So, um, but we managed to scrape by in the end, which makes the victory all that much, all that sweeter when you just barely get the victory. So um, that looks like it for now. Let me know. There's this big section at the bottom of the page that's comments. So uh, camera angles okay. Are, am I playing all right? Am I missing some things that are really obvious that I should be doing because you're more experienced and you've played more than I have? Um, let me know. Uh, you think these characters are working out all right? Um, are, are there any big rules that I'm missing? So um, I guess that's it for now. And thanks for watching.